Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can see, another day of rain, grey, cloudy, not really ideal what I would call go out and ride, but hey, let's do a review of my Triumph Trident as I am pretty much finished with my build and see what we got going on. So without uh, ado, let's go. Alrighty. So here we are, welcome to my little stable. And as I haven't given you a formal introduction to my Triumph Trident 660, I'm gonna hit you up real quick with some quick specs here. We are talking about 84 horsepower, 47 pounds of torque, and a wet weight of 416 pounds. It competes in the crowded 600 to 700 CC market space with uh, the likes of obviously Yamaha's MT-07, Honda CB650, the Kawasaki Z650 and of course the venerable Suzuki SV650. With uh, late in the year still coming the Honda Hornet and I believe I'm not really sure what they call the new Suzuki but it's also a parallel twin with uh, I believe 750 or 800 cc. In any case, so like I mentioned, I finished my build and let's take a look and see what have I done, what have I changed or what have I added. Starting from the back, you can see here pretty obvious the sliders for the stand that obviously makes it a lot more easier to store the motorcycle. Next up is the SC Project S1 exhaust. Absolutely love it. And uh, it was installed by the dealer as I did not want to mess with uh, haggling with it as it is a complete system. Uh, number three, we got the plate here that is added that did not come from the factory. And uh, they call it a belly pen, but it is really not. It is really just two separate pieces that kind of add a trim on the side, but looks really good. Since we are on the side, I added the quick shifter. That is in my book an absolute must for this motorcycle. It works amazing. Nothing like the one on my R660. No problems at all and uh, reminds me on the quick shifter that I had on the Kawasaki ZH2. Coming up here, I removed the stock mirrors and uh, kept little holes with little red coverings. I was trying to find orange ones, but uh, this is as close as I was able to get, unfortunately. And then obviously added the bar and mirrors uh, some people have been asking if I have problems with clearance and no, I don't. As you can see, there is plenty of space on both sides as well. So no clearance issues whatsoever. And last but not least, pretty obvious, I added a fairing. As you all know, I'm a big sucker for the old uh, 50s, 60s style cafe racer look. So I found uh, this manufacturer, it's called Earmax, and uh, they are making the fairing for this bike. And uh, I just selected the matte black option since I figured it's going good with the rest of the bike. You obviously have the orange theme and then you always have the black kind of filled in. And so rather than having it orange painted, I stuck with the black and I think it came out pretty good. Install process took me about two hours. Unfortunately, it did not come with written instructions, just with uh, painted instructions, but uh, I worked my way through it and it really wasn't too bad. It is uh, compared to the one from g course that I had on my Moto Good CB7. It was a little bit more involved, but again, overall, not too bad at all. And again, I think it came out just fine. I have not been able so far to test it concerning how it deflects the wind. So I will have to get back to you on this one. 
but uh, again overall I think it suits the character of the bike fairly well there are some people that like the fly screens better but again I'm a big sucker for that 50s 60s retro style look and uh, together with the bow and mirrors and the old style round tank I think it just looks pretty amazing and actually I forgot two more things one that is pretty much mandatory for any water-cooled bike and that would be the radiator guard I went with one from Evotech that uh, was a pretty easy affair all you do is you loosen these two screws on each side and it slides right in pretty easy install and the other thing I also did up front is I put on Evotech uh, fog protectors as well and uh, that is it for this bike uh, I have nothing else planned for it I am very happy the way it sits and uh, hopefully we'll be enjoying it for quite some time to come well if you stuck around all the, all the way till the end wait there's one more thing and you may or may not have noticed it during my video but uh, there is one bike that uh, has not been part of my stable and I just picked it up yesterday and that would be a 2023 Kawasaki KLX 230S. Why did I buy this one? Well, it is my Motoguzzi V85 replacement and I can already hear you saying well this is nothing like the V85 and of course it's not but uh, this is basically the bike with which I can hopefully accomplish everything in the ADV space, off-road space, that I couldn't do on the V85. And so I am looking forward to it. It is very light and nimble and uh, should be no problem. It will join my Talaria, which is my electric dirt bike. But uh, obviously the Talaria, as much as I love it, and it's super easy to ride and a lot of fun on the on the trail. It unfortunately still has uh, range limitations. If you're on it, you got about 20 miles. If you're careful, you can maybe stretch it to 40 miles and then you need to recharge for three hours. But uh, with this little bugger, I can just go out and adventure with my local adventure buddies. So look forward to a more in-depth review and intro as well as uh, probably quite a bit content this year on this little bugger. That is all I have for now. As always, keep it on too, stay safe, and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.